Uh, for me, one of the more interesting events last year in Washington was the U.S.-Iraq Business and Investment Conference, which took place last October. The uh, Iraqi government sent a very high-level delegation, including Prime Minister Maliki and the Iraqi oil minister, to uh, meet with American counterparts to discuss business opportunities in Iraq. It generated a lot of interest, a lot of excitement on the part of American uh, businesses and oil companies, and I guess we'll find out perhaps a little bit today from Tom how effective that, that meeting was. At the time, I had dinner um, at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce with a businessman from Najaf who was extremely convincing that Najaf was the place to invest money. If I didn't do it now, I would regret it for the rest of my life. It seems the tourist, tourism business is booming in Najaf. I, I, I didn't pull out my checkbook and uh, uh, I might reconsider, but uh, clearly there are enormous investment opportunities in Iraq today, but enormous challenges and pitfalls, uh, not the least of which are the security issues. Um, and today we'll be talking about all of this and more. I, I don't think there, there are a few other people better uh, situated to, to talk about this subject than Tom Donovan. Uh, he's the managing partner of the Iraqi Law Alliance, a professional limited liability company that represents multinational corporations in Iraq with offices in Basra, Baghdad, and Erbil in Kurdistan. In his capacity as partner, Mr. Donovan has represented major international oil companies as the sole international attorney in negotiations with the Iraqi Ministry of Oil. He's also represented foreign corporations in many of the largest and most complex business transactions in Iraq, um, including dealing with uh, incorporated branch offices and limited liability companies for foreign investors. And he's also been involved in the enforcement of foreign judgments before the Iraqi court system, which I know is a complex one. He speaks fluent Arabic and has published extensively on the Iraqi legal system, making him uniquely qualified to talk about this subject today. I should also note that he has published on Iraq's petroleum industry in our own uh, viewpoints issues, which are on our website, uh, mei.edu. Um, very interesting uh, viewpoints. Uh, publication. We've got a couple of articles on Iraq's oil bid rounds, uh, the political and legal obstacles to doing business in Iraq, and the status of forces agreement uh, and investing in Iraq. So check that out. He also has an article in the latest Middle East uh, policy on Iraq's upstream uh, oil and gas industry. You can find that at the bookstore. And I hope you all got the Iraq investment guide downstairs. If you missed it, you can get it on your way out. Uh, now please join me in welcoming Mr. Tom Donovan. Uh, well, thank you, and thank you, Kate, and thank you, John um, Cal Calabresi, for arranging this. This uh, presentation came out of um, came out of an idea to publish the, that viewpoints article, and they said, "Tom, we just have to have you here. We have to field some questions for you. There's an incredible amount of interest on this topic, and uh, and this um, this turnout today um, evidences that fact. Um, so, listen, thank you. Um, and um, again, my name is Tom." Uh, I work with the Iraq Law Alliance, um, and uh, we have two of our other attorneys here today. It's David and Jeff, who can maybe raise their hands. They work with us um, in the Baghdad and Erbil offices. And uh, in talking about this talk and arranging how we would give it today, we discussed uh, many different ways to give it. And I know there's a lot of Iraq experience in the room, and I know a lot of the people have different um, times in Iraq that they may have spent. Uh, they may be involved in a different aspect of the Iraqi development and the um, Iraqi reconstruction projects that are there. Um, but with all the resources that are here at MEI, with all the resources that are here uh, in Washington, it's probably best not to spend our time, which is very limited today, on, uh, um, on the history of Iraq or the politics of Iraq or the foreign policies of Iraq, but namely talk about what's going on in Iraq in terms of private investment. <laughs> in terms of corporations involved in Iraq. Um, we are a, a law firm of Western and Iraqi lawyers, which means that we have a, a somewhat of a unique backstage pass uh, in dealing with foreign companies when they come to Iraq. We can see the opportunities that they see, but then we also see the frustrations that they have in doing business there. And uh, many of them um, agree with all of us in this room that there are just tremendous opportunities there, tremendous financial opportunities, and not just the oil and gas industry in terms of in a, in a broad theme of industries, but there are also some serious systemic and uh, problems and frustrations that hamstring and prevent the would-be investor from going into Iraq, which is 
the 21st century Middle East. So with that kind of framing in mind, I thought we would just uh, maybe um, isolate some themes that I see from corporations becoming involved in Iraq without naming any names, uh, and then talk about some frustrations. And uh, I'll try to be as brief as possible and entertain as many questions as possible. Uh, but um, if you really disagree, if you really have a problem, just I, I, don't, I don't want to stop you from jumping right in, because only through discourse can we really get to the bottom of all of this. So. Uh, without further ado, um, and I, I think, I guess you all can't see it, but that's okay. I think the, we can, we can, we can that's fine. <laughs> we, can, uh, we, can always, we can always, uh, pass out the slides, but again, this is our law firm. We are, uh, we employ Western lawyers and, uh, Iraqi and also Kurdish lawyers. Um, the Kurdish and Iraqi bar associations are different. Uh, the Kurdish Bar Association in the three provinces in the north have a separate bar, if you will, than the other 15 provinces in the south of Iraq. Um, different licensing requirements and uh, different entrance requirements. But, you know, we are not Iraqi lawyers. Uh, we are Western lawyers that work in tandem to um, help the international investor become involved in Iraq. And as far as I'm aware, I think we are the only <laughs> ones that are there on the ground doing such things. Um, and the first theme, and we really can't talk, well, I guess we should talk more about what is Iraqi law. And when, when we talk Iraq law, someone asked me what it was, and they said, Tom, could you describe what Iraq law is? Because in the English model, we know it's a development of case law and statutes over time. We know it's a defined thing. What is Iraqi law? And I said, you know, the only way I can really describe it is it's a a quilt, it's a patchwork of different times and different regimes. And as they work together to produce the jurisprudence that we are beholden to in Iraq. Uh, some of these laws are, go back as far as the, as the royal monarchy times. Some of them, uh, and they're still binding unless they've been overruled. Some of them come from the Saddam Hussein regimes, and they're still binding unless they've been specifically overruled. Then there was the coalition provision, the CPA, uh, Coalition Provisional Authority, which issued 100 orders. Those are laws unless they've been specifically overruled. And then after that, we have the transitional Iraqi government, and they issued more laws, and they are still binding unless they've been overruled. And then finally, with the sovereign government of Iraq, they've issued their own laws. And with that patchwork quilt, with that very complex navigational, <laughs> um, honestly a mess, we have the laws that we decipher and then we communicate to the foreign investor. Um, again, these, we would not be able to um, advise on these without our Iraqi lawyers because it's, there is no central repository of all these laws. We have to uh, search for them, gazette them, find them, translate them, and then cross-reference them. Um, and it's, um, it's, it's a very difficult and uh, time-consuming um, ordeal. So anyway, the first theme, the first trend, if you will, that, uh, and it really eclipses all others in terms of spotlight, uh, in terms of investment, in terms of size, in terms of uh, importance to the Iraqi um, government is, of course, the petroleum, the natural gas and oil rounds that are going on. 